Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In my hands is a little bit of a unique saxophone that we're talking about in our Saxicology series and that is a LeBlanc Model 100 alto saxophone. So the LeBlanc company in addition to being known for its incredible clarinets and long lineage history of many instruments uh, in its production runs has a couple of unique saxophones under its name and belt. And a lot of that goes to the rationale or the semi rationale or then later the LeBlanc system saxophones that really pushed the boundaries for what was possible uh, with key work and added keys um, or actually taking a more boom approach to the instruments key work rather than a traditional kind of uh, one directional scale. I'm going to come back to that thought in a minute. But this is a really it's a fun, it's a funky horn. This is serial number 193, which makes it in the earliest parts of production. So this G LeBlanc saxophone, this Model 100 and uh, 120 tenor, um, these were marketed in the 50s and 60s, right around the same time as the Summer Mark VI. So for those who would have been looking for a different approach completely to the saxophone, but still wanted a French sound, they could find some similarities in this LeBlanc versus Selmer before going to a Kahn or a Busher or a King or a Martin, etc. Um, now, the LeBlanc company would later go to acquire the Holton Manufacturing and also Martin. Uh, both of those companies would be brought into the LeBlanc name, which then later became a part of the Kahn Selmer conglomerate. But in its heyday, this was a really cool professional horn and a very, very different option for those who might have been interested. So I'm going to play a little bit about it and I'm going to tell you some more about its unique characteristics and features. <laughs> parts about the Model 100 saxophone is that it's really, really even in its tone and scale. Now, the intonation is very, yeah, it's it's thorough throughout. It's really kind of smooth and balanced. The, the saxophone itself has a slightly different bore and body length and dimensions that give it a very, as I said, even tone throughout. Uh, there are different harmonic principles to the saxophone and different key designs that make sure you have a very level tone, a level playing sound throughout. Now, the boom concept means that any tone hole that's closed at any point in the saxophone, the lower notes will always stay open. So this gives a different type of venting for a mechanism, but it also gives a different kind of feel in the action. Uh, one of those things is really kind of furthered in the design of the saxophone by the, not only the, the triple left bell side key vents, um, but also in addition to the mechanism. This saxophone being made in the 50s and 60s is one of the later versions of seeing a forked E flat. Um, I talked about that in a different video with an older Busher baritone saxophone and the LeBlanc Model 100 and also the 120 has that extra kind of bent for the fork E flat on the, the body, kind of on the main line of tone holes rather than on kind of the, the, the rear side like you'd see in an old Kahn um, or any Elkhart instrument um, for an alto or tenor C melody. This keeps it really part of the, the main construction frame and it's done on purpose to do so as this saxophone has a unique mechanism that allows the entire right hand to lower the left hand stack by a half step. In performance, that means that now you have a way to play A flat or G sharp with your right hand rather than with your left hand. Now, that takes the alternate G-sharp key from the Khan and the Elkhart designs one step further, 
by changing the way you would play, um, kind of shifting that axis of symmetry, more or less, from a one-fingered line to your entire hand. So I'm gonna play around, but I'm gonna use this mechanism in my playing a little bit to show how it might feel. <laughs> side of your saxophone playing that is not traditional in any way. So for a lot of people, this kind of a mechanic is, it's too much to really grasp. Uh, but by taking some time and really getting into it, I've done that for the past couple of weeks, there's, there are small openings that you can see how different parts of your playing can change. Um, I, wanna, I wanna work towards another example to both play with this idea that it's not necessarily just flats or sharps that you're you're working through. For example, so if I played a, a B, regular B with the left hand, and then added the right hand, any one of the three, um, it'll create a B flat. So it gives you this mirrored, let's say one and three, as this uh, new line on the saxophone where you're opening up a different direction in your entire hands playing. So this might be more kind of easy to grasp from a clarinet's perspective, because there are times when you're doing different keys um, that, that equal each other through your pinkies. Um, but this saxophone, it re-asks that question in a unique pedagogical way. <laughs> lifting your middle finger rather than lifting you know your your pinky and your ring finger on one hand it's it's the completely different type of expression that as I said it, it takes time to understand and, and really get into but there's a lot of different chromatic possibilities with a saxophone like this <laughs> amongst many other saxophones, including, as I said before, the Selmer Mark VI. So in its initial price, this Model 100 was actually 14 USD cheaper than its Selmer counterpart. And if you look at the way the H&S Selmer would import to H&A Selmer in Elkhart, so the, the kind of the Paris to Elkhart bridge, there was a similar path for the LeBlanc to Kenosha, Wisconsin kind of gap uh, that allowed this saxophone to be made at manufacturer specs in two places at once. So I think about this horn in the kind of the split of where saxophone designs go as this kind of proof to say that there was more thought than just the Mark VI at that time 
and it adds to this row of professional models. You have the Constellation saxophone from CG Khan that is very unique in its keywork. You now have the LeBlanc Model 100. Yes, you have the Mark VI going for its new trigger styles um, and perhaps a more expressive tone, but for, say, the classical player that wanted a very responsive, balanced saxophone that would allow really unique extensions to performance, this was available too. And you know, the, the, the whole story is built into the marketing and how you know, the, the way that instruments are just loved and revered and then played by many. But there are some notable, notable names that can be linked to the LeBlanc saxophones, the Martin saxophones, the Holton saxophones for artists that were using these kinds of different approaches to the mechanism of their instrument. Um, and it's very cool that then LeBlanc would be the company to kind of hold the torch for, for as I said, Martin and Holton um, with the designs of their instruments to create this really balanced instrument that we have here today. So I'm going to continue to explore with this saxophone and also thank you, Katie, for letting me borrow this incredible, incredible instrument. It has been such a joy to get to know and understand um, that, yeah, saxicologists, there's some cool things. And if you have one of these instruments, continue to search with your right hand, how that becomes a part of your incorporated playing. You, you might have to shift your focus mentally and really think from a, a different type of an open perspective uh, as you practice to try and expand outwards um, rather than on a notated staff. But as always, the instrument will tell you which way it wants to go. Um, so I'm gonna play you guys out and we'll continue this discussion perhaps in another video soon. But I hope all is well across the saxophone sphere. And this was serial number 193 from roughly 2,000 of these LeBlanc model saxophones that were to be produced. And it's an absolute thrill to share its sound and its story with you today. Uh...